Um, no, I, I think you bring up a point and, and that is something like even, um, I think it was on the myth vision podcast, um, that, uh, Derek brought this up with, uh, Dr. Dale Allison. And he was like, well, you know, maybe it's, um, when he's talking about the green grass and Mark, he's like, well, you know, it says in Psalms 23 that the Lord is my shepherd, you know, and he makes me lie down in green grass and maybe it's something like that. And so it's like, because I can think of a, like a, uh, a theory about the evangelist made of made up details for some sort of theological motive, um, which oftentimes I, this is just my own opinion. Don't take this the wrong way, but it just seems like it's something that I can invent now specifically to predict these details uh, that the evangelists are just making stuff up. Um, I don't think that that's, I think that's kind of textbook ad hoc reasoning. Um, and an object, an object, listen to this. Uh, go ahead. I can, I'll let you redress that real quick. Well, I mean, I, now I don't know about that particular thing. I mean, that does kind of seem pretty speculative, the thing that Dale Allison said, but yeah. it, it's no, um, it, it's not like a new thing or a speculative thing to sure. say like the feeding of the 5,000 was copied from the Elijah and Elijah miracles. Like that, that, those like that particular that like the miraculous generation of food miracle is a common miracle that was done by prophets in the Old mm -hmm. Testament, yeah. and so the uh, and, and there's actual and w when I say these things like when I was talking about the green grass, I'm talking about like act like uh, empirical things that kind of don't make sense, not just speculative. Um, uh, you know, symbolic things that could be or could not be symbolic. Like with the grass, it, it's it's a known fact that at that time, the green grass uh, in that area was, uh, you know, widespread, uh, you know, uh, through a good portion of the year. Like that, that's just something that's known about the area at the time. So, you know, saying that, oh, it, it, you know, this must coincide with what John says because of this green grass thing, it, it, it kind of seems a little bit cherry picky to me uh, saying, you, you know, like, Oh, well this detail coincides with what John who was definitely using Mark's gospel to create his own gospel is telling us here. So it doesn't seem like a design, like an undesigned coincidence. It, it sounds very designed the way that it was, but also we do know that uh, a good portion of the new Testament story about Jesus is copied from the Old Testament patriarchs and prophets. So, I mean, it, to say that, oh, well, this is just, you know, speculative nonsense uh, to, to suggest that the Jews were pulling a, a information from the Old Testament and symbolically representing them in the New Testament, um, that, 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 that is a legitimate argument that is, you know, in the mainstream, Sure. Uh, of, of scholars. And it, it does explain a lot of the things that we get in the new Testament, like with the symbolic representation of Jesus as the Passover lamb and how John sure. is, is seeking to reinforce this idea at his feeding of the 5,000. And that, that like, that's why, um, John moves the feeding of the 5,000 from the lake shore up on a mountain. Uh, that's to solidify this connection between Jesus and Moses. And then he's got the, you know, multiplying of the bread and the fish and everything like that. And that's not only to embody Elisha and Elijah, but also as a, a way to, uh, you know, emphasize that Jesus is this Passover meal or he's this Passover lamb. That's, uh, you know, a sacrifice, uh, you know, for their sins. So, I mean, for me, there's far more theological explanation that makes more sense than the undesigned coincidence idea, because with the undesigned coincidence idea, like you've got to fabricate some of this information, like you've got to fabricate the idea that it was, uh, you know, it's only green around that time of the year in Israel or whatnot. And so like... Uh, all that, but to speak to your casualness uh, criteria, I, I find that that's a little bit too subjective. Um, now I, I get it that a lot of this stuff in history is a bit subjective, you know, to, to some extent, but saying, Oh, the casualness that this is thrown in there, it seems like there's way too much room for your own personal interpretation of how casual it is. And I mean, with the connections between like um, the, the fact that the feeding of the 5,000 is uh, you know, a, a copy of an Elisha and Elijah miracle that this is due to 
literal like uh, word for word copies of phrases that exist in both the New Testament sources and the Old Testament like Septuagint sources. Mm -hmm. So there's like this hardcore connection between the two. Uh, we know that the New Testament authors were using the Septuagint in order to inform them uh, about Jewish ideology and Jewish lore and everything like that. So this um, hard connection in the phrases there is more than just speculative. Like it's it's an actual hard connection. And I just I don't find anything like that with the undesigned coincidences. Okay.